Okay, this is the second lesson for the beginning of June. Uh, this is assignment number four. You should have completed assignment number three prior to starting this piece of work. And we'd like you to hand this in by no later than five o'clock on Friday, the 12th of June. Um, okay, so let's just quickly run through what you're being asked this week. The main idea that you're in with is this idea of uh, travels across the landscape. Um, and you've just dealt with, with the four features which uh, rivers can create as they move across the landscape, and those were the V-shaped valley, the waterfall, the uh, Yanda, and the Oxford Lake. What well, we're now moving in, thinking about how it moves and how the land itself influences the movement of that water. So that's what we're going to be dealing with in today's lesson. Um, you need to make sure you open opened up uh, this document here, which titled um, Assignment number four, higher hydrosphere assignment number four, and you're going to complete all your answers in this document. Okay, there are four questions starting off with a question on the drainage basin, uh, and then there are three other tasks after that. You will notice, just like uh, in previous assignments, task that involves you drawing um, on a piece of paper and then taking a photograph and uploading it to the Google Drive and then copying it into a, the correct place in the document. So we'll have uh, and something to draw with. Okay, you can see each of the key ideas. There are four. Um, you're going to start with this idea that a river flows through an area of land known as its rainy basin. So this is the area of land that surrounds a river um, where all water on that um, drains in the river. There's a tutorial um, that goes with that. And then you've got to answer the task, which is what is a drainage basin. Okay. Quite a forward idea, a drainage basin and we'll guide you to what to write for a particular task. In the second um, main um, task or in today's lesson, you're going to be dealing with the hydrological cycle, um, which uh, is a fancy name for the water cycle. Um, you've got to obviously deal with how water, first of all, gets in the sky prior to coming out of the atmosphere as rain, landing on the landscape. But what this um, less tutorial will help you also understand is that water doesn't automatically um, land in a river and flow back to the sea, that actually it lands on the landscape, and then how it moves to the river is dictated by um, the features of that landscape. And, and whether it moves or, or actually stored on that landscape for a period of time is to do with um, features of that landscape. So uh, watch the tutorial here for task number two, um, and then complete the task, uh, which involves you have to draw a diagram on a four paper. Uh, moving to our third task, it continues building on the second task. Actually, the main difference between task two and task three is instead of drawing a diagram, you're now writing um, about the uh, movement of water. Uh, there is a, page, a couple of pages of text to have a read through for this third task, which explores how water does one of four things when it uh, comes to the landscape. It First of all, it's into the landscape, and that's rain or snow. It is then does one of two things. It either is stored in that landscape. That could be um, in lakes. Uh, it could be stored in the soil, in the rocks. It could be stored in glaciers um, and so on. Uh, or it transfers in that landscape. So that just means it moves. Now, the river is the most obvious expression of the movement of water across the land. But it also can move through soils, through rocks, and a number of other ways. And the final feature of water on the land is it then is um, outputted. So it either pours back into the sea, uh, where, where then upon it will be re-evaporated, or it actually um, evaporates out of plants, um, because a lot of water is stored in vegetation on the land. That's a process called transpiration. So this tutorial uh, video here will walk you through the key features, and then you have to answer the exam question in the document. And that brings you to the final task, which is um, how can can the characteristics of the land surrounding the river influence how water gets to the river? Okay, and these characteristics are what we call physical characteristics. So that's just natural features of the landscape. Uh, and you'll, when you watch the tutorial, you'll see lots of different ideas explored. So, for example, if um, the entire landscape around a river is covered by trees, then the way water moves across that landscape will be altered completely because the trees will capture that water as it falls to earth. And very often they'll end up storing all of that water in the plants rather than that water actually getting to the river. Um, and that, that those ideas of how the uh, physical factors or the natural features of the land can affect the discharge of a river 
are explored in this tutorial here. And the final task, which has got some uh, eight marks attached to it for you explaining in your own words, um, describing and explaining how physical effect the discharge. Okay. Once you completed those four tasks, you have to hand them in for this assignment. You have till Friday, the 8th of June. Um, and so please make sure you get that, this second assignment in this one will probably take a little bit longer than the first assignment. So I did tell you in the first assignment, number three, that, that, that assignment number three is quite a quick task, relatively speaking. Um, this one, you should plan for it to take you a bit longer.